everyone. Christina Warner here. Welcome to another five ways and five days video series at simonsystamp.com. For my video today, we are exploring different ways to use die cut snowflakes. And on this very first card, I'm actually going to be showing you two different ideas for things you can do with your snowflake dies. So the snowflake dies I'm using today uh, for this first one are the Willow Snowflake and the Harmony Snowflakes set that has three different snowflakes in it. The first idea I'm showing you is to use your die cuts or your dies to create masks for your blending or ink blending projects. So I've cut out a bunch of these snowflakes. Um, I'm saving the largest snowflake, that willow snowflake, for my big grading area. So I'm not using that one with the masking paper yet. I've just cut these smaller three snowflakes from the Harmony snowflake set, and I'm placing them onto some white cardstock. This cardstock is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. So this will be the entire front of my card. I cut out the snowflakes multiple times so that I could have multiple snowflake masks. After I placed those on the cardstock, I then got to my ink blending. I'm using the stamp and stencil mat just to hold my uh, cardstock in place. But of course, you could just do this on some grid paper. You'll see that later as well. I'm using four different colors of ink from Simon Says Stamp. This pink color is called Peony. I just blended that in on some different areas. I don't want it to be too intense yet. This is a light layer of color. I then went to the color Lemonade, and then I also used the colors Cadet and Tide Pool. After I had my initial blending done, I removed the masks, including these little dots. I saved all the little circles from the interiors of the snowflakes and used those as additional dots. After I removed all of the masks, I set those aside or moved the dots to other spots on my project, and then I put the masks back on top. So I'm going to have two layers of blending, and having uh, these masks moving around gives it a very ethereal look, um, very faded look. You get a really fun, colorful sort of aesthetic with all of this. So after I blended on all my colors and really intensified those shades, I removed the masks and I'm left with this really neat background that has multiple layers of snowflakes that I can have for behind my big greeting. So I'm going to remove my ink blended piece from my grid sheet. In fact, this is the whole card itself. I forgot to mention, I'm blending directly on the card front. So I've removed that from the stamp and stencil mat, and then I cut the large willow snowflake uh, three times out of white cardstock and one time out of holographic cardstock. So here's your second tip for your, or I should say your second way to use your snowflake die cuts is that you can layer them up to create a thicker embellishment to use for your grading. So this is all about like layering up your snowflakes. Um, I like to layer up my snowflakes for a few different reasons. This first reason is just so that it's nice and substantial to go behind my greeting. I'm also going to show layering of snowflakes later in this video, and I'll show you a different reason why you might want to layer up those snowflakes. I use the liquid glue just to add little dots of glue all over the snowflakes and then put them right on top picked them up with my fingers and kind of moved it around, manipulated it, made sure it was in the right spot. That's why using liquid glue is so good for this. And then I put something heavy on top. I used a paperweight, but you could definitely just use some stacked acrylic blocks or anything like that. So in order to finish off my background, I thought it'd be nice to bring in some white paint splatter. So this is actually some white gouache that I've diluted with some water, so it was a nice uh, consistency. And then ran it off the edge of an acrylic block to get some nice splatter. I find using an acrylic block like this gives me a little bit more control over where all that paint splatter goes. I'm now going to use the Graceful Greetings, um, let's see, it's called Graceful Holiday Greetings stamp set. And I'm going to stamp one of the one line greetings that says Happy Holidays onto some black cardstock. I'm prepping that cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. And then I'm stamping the greeting in white pigment ink. I'm actually going to stamp this greeting twice so that I get a really nice impression with all of that white ink. 
And in order to make it even more of a stark white, I'm going to add some white embossing powder. That's why I use the anti-static powder tool. So I'm using some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, uh, shaking that on and then tapping off the excess. And then I used my heat tool just to heat set that until it was smooth and melted. So I did use a microfiber towel just to wipe off any of that anti-static powder that stuck around. And then I used the coordinating dies for the stamp set just to cut out this greeting. So it's perfectly cut out. I ran that through my die cutting machine. And then I adhered my large snowflake to the front of my card. I used a little bit of that glue and some tweezers to hold my snowflake till it was in the right spot. And then I put some very thin foam adhesive on the back of my greeting. These are some thin foam strips from Waffle Flower. So I'm placing that right over the back of my black strip of cardstock. And then I put that directly over the center of the snowflake. I used a T-square ruler just to help me get this on here straight. And then this almost finishes the card, but I thought I needed a little more sparkle, just a little bit more bling to go along with that holographic snowflake. So I brought in some sequins from Picket Fence. This is the iridescent moonshine set of sequins. I think it has three different sizes of sequins. And I just picked those up with this place tool and then use that glue to set those down. So here's the first card with two ideas on it. Once again, that is using snowflake dies as masks and also a large snowflake die stacked up for a substantial greeting area. I'm going to move on to my second card. And this one is all about using snowflakes off the edge of your card. So there's a couple of tricks that go well with this that make it a little bit better. And I'll be sure to share those with you. I'm using the Simusa Stamp Snowflake Trio dies, as well as the Layering Snowflakes dies from Honeybee. I'm going to cut out a bunch of these snowflakes just so that I have them on hand. And then I'm going to start sort of assembling and envisioning how I want my card to go. I have a pre-cut card base here. It's folded in half already. And I'm going to take this pre-cut card to my tr paper trimmer, and I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the free edge. The folded side is right under my fingers, so I'm preserving the fold, and I'm just cutting off the bottom. So I made this folded cardstock uh, two and three quarters tall. So here we are, I've just got a shorter card, and then I'm going to do some ink blending on this. To keep the card closed, I've just put a little bit of Easy C tape inside, and then I'm going to do a very simple ink blending right across the front. I'm using the same colors I did on the very first card. So we've got Peony, and then Lemonade, and then I'm going to use Cadet. I'm not going to use Tide Pull this time since the Lemonade and Cadet, when they mix, create a nice green shade. So I ink blended going kind of in a diagonal fashion, uh, across this entire card. Um, and it's going to overlap those colors and give me multiple colors. I'm going to add a little bit more pink over on this one edge just to intensify it. And then I started to place my snowflakes on top just to kind of get an idea of how I want my card to look. I also brought in another piece of cardstock that is cut to an A2 card. So I'm going to bring in this gray piece of cardstock. It is five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter tall. I'm going to slide that behind my card. And this is just going to give me an idea of how much space I have to work with because I want my finished card to still fit inside an A2 envelope. So I don't want to exceed the dimensions of an A2 card. So after I had these kind of figured out where I wanted them, I then stacked up the three snowflakes that will be hanging off the edge of my card. I'm stacking these up three deep so that they are more substantial. So if they're hanging off the edge of the card, they're not going to get bent easily. This is another reason why you might want to stack your snowflake dies because you want them to be a little bit more sturdy. I wanted to stamp my greeting before I adhere my snowflakes. So I heat set my ink blended background just to make sure it was completely dry and that that embossing powder would slide right off. I then went back to that same stamp set that I used before, the Graceful Holiday Greetings. And this time I grabbed the one that says Merry Christmas. I'm going to do the same exact steps that I did for the black cardstock, but this time I'm on my ink blended cardstock. 
I prepared it with an anti-static powder tool and then stamped my greeting in white pigment ink twice. This is going to make sure I get a really good impression. Also, just something to note, when I stamp with the greeting stamps, especially, I like to not press on my misty door very much. I just let the, the stamp kind of kiss the cardstock. It doesn't need to be smushed down. I then used my alabaster embossing powder right over the top once again. And then I used my heat tool to heat set this until it was smooth and melted. And you can see that bright white really stands out once it's melted. So in order to assemble my card, I'm once again using that gray cardstock as a guide. And then I'm going to place my snowflakes right on top. And then I'm using a strip of post-it tape and I'm gonna line it up right along the top edge of that fold. This is going to allow me to pick up those three snowflakes that are hanging off the edge. And also it gives me a visual guide for where I want to apply my glue. So everything hanging off the bottom of the post-it tape will need glue because that's what's going to adhere to my card. I don't want any adhesive on the back of the snowflakes on the areas that are hanging off the edge. So I took my liquid glue and added it to all those areas, paying special attention to the areas of the snowflakes right up against where that fold will be. I then turned over my post-it tape and then brought it over and uh, lined it up with the top edge of my card. Another way you could also do this is turn your card base over upside down and place it right over top. But I wanted to make sure it was still in the perfect position to line up with my card. Now I'm using this very large paperweight to hold that down while all three of those snowflakes adhere to my card front. I then took the other two snowflake die cuts and these are just one layer of cardstock and I adhered those directly down onto the card front. So this finishes my second card for this video, having those three snowflakes hanging off the edge. And it also still makes it so that it will fit inside an A2 envelope. Pretty fun to do with these. A lot of ideas you could do with something like this. Okay, so we're gonna move on to my third card. And this one is all about an acetate card and creating almost like a DIY lace look with all of your snowflake dice. So I'm going to first cut out a bunch of snowflake dies. I've got the layering snowflakes from Honeybee, from Simus' stamp. I've got Harmony snowflakes, Marie, Amelia, Eliza, and also the snowflake trio. So I cut all of those out of white cardstock, just had a big long die cutting session. And then I'm going to go to my acetate card base. This is from Hero Arts. Actually comes in a set with envelopes as well. And I'm going to set that aside for a minute while I get adhesive for the back of my snowflakes. I'm using Simon's micro dot sheets. I thought it'd be a little bit easier than having to apply glue to the back of all of these snowflakes. So after I determined which side of the micro dot sheet has the adhesive, I then placed a bunch of my snowflakes right down onto that, those adhesive dots, placed that paper back on top and then burnished the top of the snowflakes. This just really presses the snowflakes into that adhesive so that I have adhesive on every single section of these snowflakes. I then picked up each one of these snowflakes and adhered them to the front of this acetate card base. I'm gonna place this one right here kind of in the center. And then as I add more snowflakes on, I just want like the edges of the snowflakes to be touching. You could also have them not touch at all and just have them nestled in next to each other. But I wanted it to look like, almost like this is a whole piece of lace, that all of these are interconnected and touching each other. So I mostly want these to touch each other. They can hang off the edge of the card a little bit, but I wanna preserve the very bottom of the card. I want that to um, not have any snowflakes cut off. So I'm positioning my snowflakes so that they will only touch the bottom of the card, that they won't hang off the bottom of the card. So you can see I've got these positioned just right so that they kind of touch the bottom edge, but they don't go off the edge as well. For any areas that don't want to stick, I brought over that micro dot sheet once again, slid it under the edge of the snowflake, burnished on top, and then removed the micro dot sheet and that gave it a little more adhesive. And in order to make these snowflakes really, really stick down to my acetate, um, there's a couple things I'm gonna do. First, 
I am trimming off the excess of the snowflakes that are hanging off the edge. And then I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. Sometimes with micro dot sheets, you don't get like a really permanent adhesion just because everything's not pressed down enough. But I find that running it through my die cutting machine really presses those down permanently and you get a really good adhesion. So here's my card front. It also really uh, emphasized that fold. So now I've got some white cardstock. This is cut to uh, an A2 card front at this moment. So it is four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And I'm doing some very easy ink blending, similar to what I've done on a, my previous two cards. I'm using those same colors that I used before just to get a nice overlap and more of a rainbow fashion. After I had my ink blending just about where I wanted it, I thought I would add a little more detail with this. So I thought I'd add some water. So I'm using a little bit of water sprayed into my hand. And then I actually just took this distress sprayer bottle and really easily gently spritzed my cardstock from kind of off to the side. And that adds just a few little spray dots. This is going to give it almost like a bokeh effect. And then I'm going to hit that with my heat tool just to speed up the drying. And then like I did on that first card, I'm going to add some paint splatter with some white gouache, running that paintbrush off the edge of an acrylic block. All right, I'm going to set this background aside to dry while I work on some greetings and also some additional die cuts for my card. I decided to die cut three snowflakes out of holographic cardstock, and I'm placing them right over the top of where those snowflakes are on my card front. You'll notice there's a greeting off to the side. I initially thought I would do a circle greeting, but then decided not to. So we'll get back to that in a second. In the meantime, I'm using the A2 layers dies from Waffle Flower to trim down my ink blended background. And I also cut another piece of white cardstock to the same exact size. I'm going to adhere my ink blended panel to the inside of my acetate card. This is going to allow those snowflakes to sort of float on top because the front of the card is clear. So I'm lining this up on the inside of my acetate card front, and then I'm gonna press that down. Now I want it to look really nice from the back as well, and this will give me a place to write a greeting to my recipient. So I'm actually going to turn my card over, and I'm gonna take that piece of white cardstock that's cut to the same size as my ink blended piece, and I'm going to put that right on top on the back of the card. This is going to sandwich in any of that adhesive showing through the card. And it gives me a nice place to write a greeting to the card recipient. All right, so back to my greeting. I wasn't gonna do this circle one, but then I decided, no, I'm just gonna use the actual cut shadow shape for this die set. This is the All the Joy die set from Simon. And I stacked three white die cuts. And then I'm going to stack a fourth on top that it is cut out of holographic cardstock. And then I put all four of those on top of the shadow layer that's cut out of white cardstock. So I thought this just really set off the greeting and it gives a very floating look on top of all of these snowflakes. I really love those additional holographic snowflakes that are around the greeting also. To finish off this card, I brought in some of those sequins that I used on the previous card. And I just picked those up and inherit them down using some liquid glue. So this is going to finish up the third card and our fourth way to use snowflake die cuts. All right, so we're gonna move on to our four, uh, fifth and final way to use snowflake die cuts. And this is a really, really fun one. I'm gonna walk you through the entire card so you can see how I did it. For the fifth way to use snowflake die cuts, we're using them in a, in a shaker card. And I've got two different ways to use them in a shaker card. So I guess this is a bonus way, a sixth way. I'm first going to start by creating my shaker window. I'm using the nested circle size from Simon's Stamp. And my card is going to be five by seven. So I'm starting with some five by seven cardstock and then cutting a large circle out of that cardstock. Run that through my die cutting machine. And after I have that cut out, I have the very front of my card. So I'm gonna work on the back wall of my shaker, and I'm going to uh, create the back wall directly on the card front. So this is a five by seven card base. I'm lining up where 
that circle window will be. And then I'm just going to make some pencil marks. This is going to give me a good guide to make sure that when I do my ink blending, I have it all the way to the edges of that circle. I'm going to use my T-square ruler and just draw a line from each one of those. And now I have that area on the center of my card that I can use for ink blending. All right, so I'm using uh, three different colors of ink. I've got Tide Pool, which is the green I was using before. And then I'm also going to use Cadet. Those colors blended over each other are really, really beautiful. And then for a third color, I'm bringing in Galaxy, which is almost like a purple blue, a very violet blue shade. And that's going to finish off that back wall of my shaker area. So now I'm going to build up the front of my shaker. I've got a piece of acetate that I've cut to the right size to cover that circle window. And then I've got my snowflakes. So here are three snowflakes and then also a partial cut snowflake that was left over from my previous card that I'm just going to place right over there. So I kind of want it to look like that from the front, but I want it to look like these snowflakes are inside the shaker. So I'm going to be adhering these snowflakes from the inside of the shaker area. So I've turned over the front of my card and I'm gonna add a little bit of glue right along the edge of that circle window and then adhere my snowflake. This is first going to adhere the snowflakes to the shaker window. And I'm gonna do that with the other two snowflakes as well. I'm gonna add just a line of glue right along that edge. I'll adhere the snowflake to the shaker window just having it kind of peeking out. And then I'll do that with the third snowflake as well. And then to adhere the actual acetate to the front of the shaker, I'm going to add glue to all of the little bits of the snowflakes on the inside, because these are going to be, you know, on top of the acetate. So I'm adding some little dots of glue all over those snowflakes. And then I'm going to do a line of glue around the outer edge of that circle window. And I'm even going to put that adhesive over the top of the snowflakes. And then I can take my acetate and just place that right over the top. I'm gonna to really press this down and make sure that it's adhered completely. And I'm even going to take a paperweight and just put that over the top to make sure that it has enough time while it's pressed down to really adhere. So in order to actually create the shaker well or the shaker area, I've taken a really long strip of foam tape and I've folded it back on itself and adhered it to itself. So it's now two foam layers deep. You can see I've kind of folded it there. And then I'm taking my scissors and I'm cutting this in half to create a more narrow strip of this foam tape. I'm going to be adhering it all together with the two layers already stuck together. I just find it the easiest way to do this. So I'm removing the release paper from both sides of the foam tape, and that allows the foam to be manipulated and make it flexible. So I can really uh, curve this foam tape around my circle window, and it's going to encapsulate everything that I put inside my shaker, and there won't be any gaps for anything to escape. So as I bring this around, I'm just going to use some scissors to get that cut off to just the right spot. And then I can use my fingers to kind of press that foam in so that it's a perfect circle. I then use more of that foam that I had doubled up on itself. And I put the foam all over this, including the edges and filling in those gaps. We don't want any like sagging areas on our card front. So I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of foam tape. And then in order to actually assemble the shaker, I'm gonna figure out my shaker bits first. I'm gonna use those same sequence that I did before. And then I cut out three small snowflakes out of holographic cardstock. I'm gonna put those little snowflakes inside. They're gonna be free to shake around and move around. And then I put in all of those sequins. I actually finished off one pack of those sequins and had to open a second. That's how much I love these sequins from Picket Fence. I then took my folded card base and I put it right on top. Now I'm using the corner of my Misty with the foam layer really uh, taken out so that I can use that top corner in my Misty to get everything lined up just right. Then I press that down, right down onto that shaker. And then when I fold, uh, flip this back over 
you can see the finished shaker area where I've got those three holographic snowflakes moving freely and all of my sequins. It's a really, really beautiful effect. For my greeting, I'm taking some vellum. I'm going to uh, use that same stamp set that I've been using, and I'm going to prep the area with an anti-static powder tool, and then I'm going to stamp my greeting in Versamark ink. Instead of uh, putting white embossing powder on this like I've done for the previous cards, I'm actually going to switch it up and use a silver embossing powder. So now I'm using Sterling Embossing Powder from Brutus Monroe. After I have that applied and the excess shaken off, and then hit that with my heat tool until it was smooth and melted. So in order to make this vellum greeting look like it's floating on top of the card front and have no adhesive showing, I've got a second strip of vellum and I'm running it through a Xyron Create a Sticker machine. This adds adhesive over every single bit of the surface area. So I'm going to press that down and then peel up that release paper. And then I'm going to peel up the vellum from this strip and then put that directly um, on my grating. Now I, this is the back of the grating, so I just uh, press it onto the back. I'm gonna burnish that with my fingertips, make sure that's really stuck down. And then I cut it to a smaller strip, including a diagonal edge on the left edge. And then ran this through my Xyron machine one more time. And this is going to, once again, apply adhesive over the entire back of this greeting. And this is going to make it so when I adhere it to my card front, there's no adhesive showing because there's adhesive everywhere on the back of my greeting. So I'm going to place this right onto the front, onto the front of my card, kind of in that bottom right area of the circle shaker. And I'm gonna bring in my T-square ruler just to make sure I'm adhering this completely straight. I'm gonna put that down and slide that up just so I have a good idea that it's adhering completely straight. And that finishes my fourth and final card. So all in all, we probably got, we had definitely got five ways, possibly six with two different ways to use snowflake die cuts on your shaker. Here are all four cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is a really fun way to get into the holiday spirit and use all of those snowflake dies you might have been collecting over the years. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out all the supplies below and I'll catch you in another video very soon. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.